got two. Thousands of times, the monkey is now wired to do this. So much so that now you can open the monkey's fingers, and guess what the monkey does for no good reason? Over and over again. You go, so what? I'm not a monkey. What's the point? <laughs> well, the point is this. Do you ever go to work the same way each day? Maybe you get on the same on-ramp each day. Do you have a kind of a ritual like that? Have you ever had a day where you're actually supposed to go in a different direction, but you're not thinking or on your cellular phone, and what do you do? You get right on that on-ramp the same way? You're a monkey. <laughs> what you're doing is you've conditioned yourself so much that it's like hypnosis. You just automatically go into it. Well, can we condition ourselves to feel frustrated over and over again by going into that same physiology, that same set of movements? You bet. Can you condition yourself to feel depressed? You bet. Can you also condition yourself to feel absolutely euphoric, where that is your natural emotional pump? And I'm not talking about just being motivated. I'm talking about really, truly feeling that way day to day, where the natural feeling for you is to be strong and to be focused and to be determined and to be happy. The answer is absolutely. Now, that's one aspect is physiology. Let's look at focus a little bit. You might say, okay, Tony, I know I've got to focus on what works. Are you saying just be a positive thinker? I don't believe in positive thinking. I don't believe in going to your garden and saying, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. That's not going to, they'll take your garden. That's not going to help you. You've got to be able to focus on how it really is, but not make it worse than it is. You then got to see it how you want it. And then you've got to focus on how am I going to make it the way I want it. And I'll tell you how you control your focus. It's not through affirmations, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm really happy. I really am. <laughs> With that physiology, no matter what you say, you're not going to feel happy. But what it really is, is coming down to asking yourself better questions. You see, every moment while you're listening to me right now, every moment in your life, you're, quote, thinking. Thinking is nothing but the process of asking and answering questions. Here's the problem. Most of us ask questions unconsciously. And ask and you shall what? Receive. So if you ask lousy questions like, why does this always happen to me? Well, it may not always happen to you, but your brain is like the ultimate computer. If you ask it a question, it's got to come up with an answer. It's got to make one up. So if you say, why does this always happen to me? Your brain goes to your schmuck. Or some people say things like, how come I can never lose weight? Your brain goes, because you're a pig. <laughs> you ask a lousy question, what are you going to get? A lousy answer. A better question might be, how could I lose weight now and enjoy the process? Because if you say, how can I lose weight now, your brain will just go on, go on a diet, and you go, oh, I don't want to go through that again. But if you say, how can I lose weight now and enjoy the process, your focus goes to not only achieving, but enjoying the process. You might say, you know, I've always wanted to ride horses. Maybe I'll take horseback riding lessons. I don't even be thinking about it and also lose weight. To get the idea of what I'm talking about, I'm doing it quickly because in personal power we've talked about these, but I want to remind you of them because the questions you ask yourself and the way you move radically changes the way you feel. The way you feel determines what you're going to do. In a frustrated state, you're not going to go out and be totally loving. In a frustrated state, you're not going to go start a business. Remember, it's not our intellect that makes us do these things. We don't marry someone because we made an intellectual list. You marry them because they ran off with your heart and you're passionate to be with this person. You love them. You start a business because you found some drive inside of you. Because it's hard to do those things. But the rewards are in who we become as a person as we live in these states, and they are habits. So you might want to take my little test. You might want to take a few minutes, stop this videotape, and actually write down a list of all the emotions you experience in a week. I mean, both the good and the bad, honestly. Right? What, what are the terrible feelings? What are the not-so-good feelings? That you not feel once in a while, but consistently feel. What are the great ones? And again, test this. And I think what you're going to find is you've got probably less than a dozen emotions you experience consistently. And as a result of that, what's happening is at least half of them make you feel like heck. And as a result of that, what's happening? You should feel a smidge cranky when you see this because you're ripping yourself off. There are 3,800 emotions you could feel. So quality life is a life of powerful, positive emotion that you're able to share with the people around you, whether it be your kids or anybody else, because you're feeling it, not because you're pumped up, not because you're trying to make be positive or give something to someone else because you really feel that way. And if you got everything else in the world, you got the money and the homes and the cars and you got success and everybody respects you and you've changed the world, but you're not happy, then you got a John Belushi on your hands. A guy that tons of people love, did what he loved in his life, and he's gone because he didn't make himself feel good. He made everybody else feel good. Or an Elvis Presley. Or maybe your neighbor. Or maybe you and your past. It certainly was my past. So I really want you to take a look at this. Let me offer you one other little tool and then I'll take you to Hawaii. It's a simple little thing. So simple. See, I'm a big believer in profound knowledge. Profound knowledge to me is something that is so powerful, but it is so simple. It's something that as soon as you understand it, whether it be a strategy or an idea or a distinction, that the minute you understand it, you can immediately change the quality of your life as well as anybody else's life that you have the privilege to actually touch. So here's a simple idea. I call it incantations. 
we all know about self-talk. You know, you should talk to yourself right. But you can self-talk yourself like crazy. You're great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, and still feel like heck. So that doesn't do it. We know about affirmations. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. The difference between an affirmation and what I want to talk to you about is something I call incantations. The literal dictionary definition of incantations is magical words spoken forth. Now, when you speak magical words, they have an impact on you. What's the magic that takes a word into something that actually changes our life? Well, repeating it over and over again is okay, but it's emotion. I mean, think about it. That's what starts wars. That's what makes you fall in love. That's what changes your life is emotion. So we have certain phrases that we say to ourselves a lot, over and over again. But when we say them and add emotion, they literally put us in a form of almost hypnosis. Kind of like incantation. Think about the times of King Arthur and uh, the spells that used to be put on people to turn them from a frog into a prince or vice versa. Well, we use these incantations all the time. People say to me things like, you know, uh, you ask somebody, could you go get me the salt? And they're, had, they're on the way in going, I don't know where the salt is. I really don't know where it is. It, it's right over there to the right. I don't know where it is. You keep saying, I just don't know where it is. You open the cupboard, you really look, you keep saying, I don't know. And finally say, I can't find the salt, amazingly. So a person comes in, they walk right next to you, reach right in front of your face, and they go, what is this? You go, the salt. Have you ever had an experience like this, honestly? Well, the salt was right in front of your face. Did you see it? Yes. How come you didn't perceive it? Because you'd literally given yourself in psychology what we call a scotoma, a blind spot. You'd hypnotize yourself into literally not seeing it. Now, we do this with our lives all the time. People say, you know, I just can't do this. I, I just can't get myself to follow through. I can't get myself to follow through. I just can't. Why do you think I can't get myself to follow through? <laughs> well, it might have to do with what you say 20 times a day with all the emotional intensity you can possibly generate that's creating this challenge. You've got to notice that. Or, I love chocolate. I, love, I just love it so much. I can never give it up. Now, teach me how to give it up. Well, nothing's going to change you if you keep giving your brain and your body a direct command through incantations. And by the way, you can use incantations to enhance your life. What if when you were running, you were saying, I'm a lean, mean, running machine? Or, every day and every way I'm getting better and better. An old affirmation from an old book from years ago that now most of us know, but do you use it? See, my whole thing in life is, so much stuff that makes a difference in life is simple. We know it. But the difference in life is knowing doesn't change your life. Doing does. Lots of people know what to do, but they don't do what they know. So what I want to do right now is have you just think about, put yourself in a strong state. Sit up in your chair. Don't be sitting passively anymore in here, because that's the challenge. You're not in my seminar. My seminar, I'd move you. Because the last part of emotion, I should mention, is conditioning. Just like those monkeys, what makes them go is repetition. But here's what they found out when they did this training of their fingers. If they take down all the fingers and they move this finger, but while they're doing it, they create a tremendous amount of emotion in the animal. And the way they do that is they stimulate the pleasure center of the brain in this monkey while this is happening, pleasure, while it's happening, pleasure, while it's happening. Pretty soon, guess what? It doesn't take thousands of times, a dozen or two times, and the monkey does this constantly. Advertisers know this. How the heck do you think they run all these commercials? Commercials have very little to do with what the product really is. In a beer commercial, do you get reality? Do you get a big guy with a nice beer belly grabbing his buddy by the head, pounding him, going, eh, love you, little buddy? I don't think so. What you get instead is some really sexy, attractive woman or man who's drinking this beer looking wonderful, as if that had anything to do with a beer. See, the reality is it all comes down to attaching emotion to what it is you want. Every advertiser knows that. What you want to learn to do is advertise in your own brain to condition yourself to follow through. And the first way to do that is right now be in an upstate. And by the way, if you see some video of our university and you see people having a great time, look like they're at a rock and roll concert, or the top sporting event, or they're celebrating, it's not about pump up. It's about putting yourself in the state where you will learn and remember. That's what it's really about. So here's the tool I want you to learn. Really simple. We're going to show you a tool I call an urge management tool. It'll show you how to take something, for example, that you don't want to do and get yourself to love doing it. Really love doing it. I'll also show you a tool if there's something you love to do that's not good for you, how to change it. And it's all done with some simple questions. So let's go to Hawaii. And let's give you a little idea what it looks like, and then I'll demonstrate it for you with a real person. And I think you'll laugh and, and hopefully learn as well. I'll see you in a few moments. I want to give you one other little tool, and it's a t tool that is so simple again. It's like my idea of profound knowledge is when you take something complex and you figure out how to make it so simple, anybody can do it. You can even use it immediately, it's easy, and it produces a result. Now, I'll tell you what the tool is. 
It's about how to change the quality of any experience you have in a matter of seconds. Any experience. Lovemaking, a business situation, a meal, exercise, anything. And the tool I'm going to talk to you about is called the Quality Quantifier. And what it really is about is how to increase the quality of any experience you have. I developed this tool because people have used like the personal power product, for example, around the world and made major changes in their weight. For example, how many of you use that product to lose some weight? Let me see your hands. Now, do people overeat every moment they're alive? Yes or no? They only eat when they're in an overeating what? State. When you get in that state, you lose all your consciousness about what to eat, about how to eat, about how much to eat. It's gone because you're in a state of such urgency. And when people are trying to make their life better, they have to be able to do it by being conscious. But what happens when the urgency rises, your consciousness disappears, and all of a sudden you lose all of your faculties. So I started thinking, have I ever been in a state where I felt like I had to eat? But then something broke the pattern, and I forgot about it for a while. How many of you had that experience? You thought you were starved, something broke your pattern, and you lost the urge. It's not that you can't manage your behavior, it's that you're not managing your urges. Because if at the moment of the urges you took something to take control of it, you could have changed it all. So in order to do that, I was at a friend's house, and I was thinking, okay, how do I help people manage those urges? There's so many tools. I want to create something so simple, anybody can do it. I thought, there's certain levels of urges. They have different levels. Some urges you feel driven. Some urges you feel like no matter what, you're going to have it right now. Like how many of you have ever broken some of your own health rules because you've gotten such an urge state? Okay? But other times... It's like you could have that food you think you're normally addicted to. It's sitting there in front of you, and you don't even care. Did you get that experience too? And not because you were full, just because you weren't into it. So I said, well, let's quantify that. There's a quality of experience. There's a quality of our state where we follow through, where we follow through a little, where we don't follow through at all, and where literally no one can make us follow through, make us eat it. And I've, everyone has this capability. It's all a matter of manipulating our focus, our perception, the meaning we attach to things. So I was at this friend's house, and he had some banana bread sitting on their uh, coffee table. And I looked at the banana bread, and I asked this lady there who I know, I said, what's your level of desire for that banana bread right now on a scale from 0 to 10? She looked at it and went, maybe a 4. I said, well, what would it take to make it a 7? She said, what do you mean? I said, to make it where, right now for whatever that is, you've now quantified where you are. What would it take to have the desire move up to seven? Not ten, but seven, where you really start to really want it. She said, well, if I thought about it being hot. I said, what about eight? So if I thought it was hot, and it just come out of like the oven, and I thought about its smells, and I, I could actually feel the chewiness in my mouth. And you could see her start to go into state. Her eyes got like this. Start doing the banana. She's looking at the banana bread like this. <laughs> She's going to swoop in for it now, right? I said, what would it take it to 10? She goes, if you put chocolate on it. <laughs> I said, okay, whoa, 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 hold back now. I said, what would it take for you to get it to 2? She said, to realize it's just cold and been sitting there for a while. And you could see her just drop down to it. So it's like a scale, right? I said, okay, what would it take for you to get to minus 2? And she said, I couldn't do that. I mean, I like it. I said, I know you can't, but if you could do it. Whenever people say they can't do something, you say, I know you can't, but if you could, they'll give you the answer. If you're persistent. She goes, I guess if I looked at the grease on the napkin it's sitting on, and I thought about that going in, and, oh, oh, then I wouldn't want it at all. You could just see her whole state change. I said, what would it take to make it minus five? She said, if I saw all that grease, like, crumpled together, like coming out my pores, like acne or something. Ugh. I said, what would it take for it to be minus 10? She goes, oh, my God, if I thought it was going to make me sick. She goes, if I thought it make me sick, I'd throw up. Oh, my God, I'd never do it. I said, what would that be? Oh, ah. And she started getting this really state. I said, you want it? She goes, no, I don't want it. I said, well, come back here for a second. Imagine it being hot and moist and chewy. And she went, oh, yeah. <laughs> I imagine chocolate on Chocolate on it. <laughs> I said, no, no, come back over here. It's really cold. See, it's cold. See, though? And literally, I could just move her up and down the scale of urgency. So I'm watching this, and I'm saying, wow, this is amazing. Being able to shift back and forth. And by the way, people usually, to get to minus 10, also have fear of loss. It's that they be sick, or they lose their freedom, 
or I would do something to him that's horrible, some form of pain. Pain, the loss of pain, the fear of loss, that pain seems to push people through the low roof for urgency. Like when you say, oh my God, I haven't eaten in 12 hours. That'll move you up there real fast. I'm starved. At the same time, if you think something's going to make you sick, you'll avoid it at all costs. It becomes that other level. So I started saying we all have the resources inside to change where we are on the scale from one place to the other. But then I started using this thing thinking, wow, I could do this beyond food. Most people in life have experiences where they go out and do something and see how it turns out. How silly. How stupid. So I was here in Hawaii for a program a couple years ago, and a good buddy of mine, we run together, we went out on a run. And it was a really hot day, and we were on the big island that year. And the place we ran was like where all the volcanoes have just desolate, you know, created made it desolate. There's no trees, there's nothing. And it was really, really hot, and there was no wind. So we went on this run, and we were just pushing it pretty good. And we came back at the end of the run, and I said, let me ask you a question. I said, how would you rate that run we just did on a scale from minus 10, worst thing of our whole lives, to plus 10, the best run ever? He said, I'd say it's like a 6 or a 7. I said, that's exactly where I rated my head, too. I said, let me ask you a question. If you and I were going to go back and run again, is there anything we could have done that would have made it, if we decided it was going to be a level 8 run, could we have done that? If we decided in advance it would be a level 8 run, could we have done it? He said, yeah. I said, what conditions would we have to create in our head or in our bodies? What would he have to do to make that a level 8 run for you? He said, if we would have run like in unison as we run it. You know, because sometimes you went ahead and I went ahead and we went back, kind of back and forth. And, and sometimes we're going back here and there, you know. And sometimes we're teasing each other. But if we were running in unison, he said, that would just, that'd be an 8 for me. I said, well, that's pretty cool. I've never thought of that. Yeah. I said, what would have made it a 9 for you? He said, a 9. He said, if we've been running in unison... And we were running, like, doing a cadence or something. Like, saying something. We were doing it in unison. He said it would just be, it would be awesome. These guys had a military background. A cadence, right? And I said, well, what would have made it a 10? He said, we've been running our guts out. Right? I mean, well, we couldn't even breathe. We're at the end of it. We've been in unison. We've been cranking. And we just collapsed from total intensity and exhaustion. And I said, you know what? I said, I now know why you're always getting injured. Because he's always getting injured when he's exercising. Because the only way for you to have a level 10 experience is to push yourself beyond what is helpful and be totally anaerobic. And he went, oh, wow. He said, you're totally right. So I want to have a great experience. My complex equivalent in my head of a great experience is so exhausted that I have nothing left. I said, so I've discovered in my life there are lots of ways to have a level 10 experience. There isn't just one way. So how can we have a level 10 experience but not be burnt to the ground? He said, Wow. Thought for a while. I said, well, if while we were running, we would have like, noticed you know, the water in the distance and noticed the different shapes of the lava. If we would have, as we're running, looked back at each other and smiled a few times while we were running in unison, if we would have brought like, a piece of music for the last part of the run that we could have turned on and we could have cranked to and felt really good to but not been exhausted, we came up with all these things and we made a level 10 run. So what I do now in life is when I'm having an experience, I ask myself, what's the quality of experience I'm committed to having? I don't wait and hope it shows up. Does that make sense? Because if you wait and see, you get what shows up. You decide in advance, what's the outcome? And the way you do that is you give a numerical number to it to start with. You say, where am I right now about doing this run? You might wake up and go, I'm at level four about doing this run. What do I want this run to be? And you may not want it to be a 10, but you probably want it to be in the 8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10 range. You say, okay, I want it to be at least a level eight. Then you ask yourself, what conditions would I have to create in myself or in the environment what would I need to do to meet more of my six human needs, in essence? Does that make sense? So what would I have to do? What would I have to notice? What would I have to appreciate? What would I have to do with myself? What would I have to think? What would I have to focus on in order for this to be a higher level experience for me? And what happens is you then set yourself up for victory. And I came back after this run. I was so juiced because, like I said, now I can have a great run whenever I want. I can just decide to, figure out the conditions, make it happen. I, it's, we all have this illusion that life makes us feel a certain way rather than we create the conditions within ourselves that generate our life so false. So what you want to do is see where are you, step one, zero to ten. Step two, how do you want to feel? Describe some of those feelings. Step three, give it a numerical number. It's going to be a level eight experience or nine or whatever. Step four, what are the conditions that I can control? Not, I'll be happy if you do everything I want. And then go do that. And I'll give you an example of this also. At the same time I was there, I shared this with a group about my run with my buddy. And this one man raised his hand. He said, but Running for me is a minus 10 experience. I said, why? He said, because I'll die of a heart attack. I said, have you died in a heart attack in the past? Is that how you know? He said, no, but I, I was running one time. My heart started beating out of me. 
I said, well, how long ago was that? He said, it was 10 years ago. I said, well, are you in better shape, worse shape? What does your doctor say? He said, oh, my doctor says I'm in really, really great shape, but I could never run again because I know what that means. I said, well, great. Tell me what it means. And so he told me what it was at minus 10. I said, what if it was only minus 3? I didn't go to plus 10. That's too big a jump. Do you follow me? One of the big things is you go, I'm going to have a level 10 experience, and you don't even know how to do a 4 yet. So you've got to go from, like, wherever you are at 1 or 2 and go to 4, and then go to 6, and then go to 8, and move your way up. I didn't take him to 10. I said, now, as long as you know you're healthy and you're running in a way that does not tax your heart, you're being totally aerobic, you're going to walk up necessarily, you're wearing a heart monitor the whole time. I said, could you do that? He said, yes. He was looking forward to it. He came back the next day. I said, what was your level of run? He said, i got to tell you, it didn't work. Everybody looked, and he said, I had a level 16 run. So I want to show you how to do this in kind of a fun way. Let's take pizza. I think that will be an easy example. It's a fun example. Who here is absolutely totally, completely addicted to pizza. You could swallow two or three of them right now. You're so, you, I mean, nothing can stop you from pizza. That's how much you want it. A total addiction to pizza. If you have that addiction, stand up so I can see it. All right, hold it. All right, how about, how about this gentleman right here? Come on down, sir. Give him a hand. Come on down. This is Bill. Give him a hand. It's Bill. First point is you've got to recognize where you are currently about the, the task at hand, whether it's running, whether it's pizza, anything. So you're going to assign a numeric value to your experience. You're going to say on a scale from minus 10 to what? Plus 10, where are you? So we'll say to you, on a scale, Bill, from minus 10 to plus 10, where are you around eating pizza? Plus 10. Plus 10. Is it just plus 10 or is it above plus 10? Plus 12. Plus 12. Is that about accurate? Yeah. Plus 12. Okay? So then, most people never decide in advance the level of quality, pleasure, joy, excitement, or even pain that they're committed to experiencing to a given task in advance. So the second step is to consciously describe what feelings you want to experience while doing a particular activity. The third step is to decide and quantify. You say, I'm going to give it this quality, I'm going to make it a level 10 experience, 9, whatever. The fourth step to the right here is you're going to ask yourself the question, what conditions must I create inside myself or the environment or to experience this at level of quality, at level whatever? Okay? What do I need to focus on, appreciate? What do I need to do with the task in order to change how I feel about it? What we'll do here with Bill is we will ask him where he is and we'll get him to move things for us and tell us what he has to do to change it on the scale. So Bill, if you imagine this is our scale from minus 10 to plus 12. We'll have to add two more here for Bill. Okay? To plus 12. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pizza in front of him, and he'll describe for us a little bit what are some of the qualities that he needs. So, Bill, here is a pizza, sausage pizza. Well, first off, I don't eat sausage or pepperoni. You, you don't eat sausage or pepperoni? I love like the cheese and, and the other aspects of the pizza. Cheese pizza. <laughs> yes. What's your level of desire for this pizza? Right now it's only a 10. It's only a 10. It's only a 10. Okay. Well, it's not really warm. It's not really warm. Well, imagine it warm. 10. 10. Imagine it getting warmer. Can imagine, can imagine some mushrooms on it. Okay, okay imagine some good. mushrooms on it. Maybe a 12. It's a 12. So imagine it with mushrooms on it, warm. Mm -hmm. Some dried tomatoes. Some dried tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Dried tomatoes, mushrooms, cheese. Melt the cheese. With <laughs> dripping with cheese. Dripping with cheese. Dripping with cheese. Extra cheese. What kind of cheese? Extra cheese. Extra Double cheese. cheese. <laughs> What's your level of desire at that level now? About 15. About 15. Okay, so extra cheese. Does that help him get in that state? So let's write down. What does he do to get it higher? Write it down in your little sheet here. To get even higher, what does he do? He adds in his mind that it's really hot. He adds in his mind that it's got mushrooms, and to get it to 15, he puts on extra what? Cheese. Look at his face when he even says it. Look at his face. <laughs> and sun-dried tomatoes. Thank you. Now, think about this pizza now, and I want you to take this pizza, if you would, and put it down, if you would, to level 8. Go ahead and hold it with the other hand. Level 8. Tell me, what do you got to do to make it level 8? 
Um, what's the plus A? It's not really, it wouldn't be warm. It'd be warm. And um, maybe it's just cheese pizza or. Oh, I gotta give it, I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong one, didn't I? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, if it wasn't really warm, if it was just slightly above room temperature, maybe it'd be an A. Slightly above room temperature, which is about what that one is. Okay, so that's an A. Bring it down to a three. It'd have pepperoni and sausage on it. Okay. Call both of them now. It looks more attractive when he's got more. Did you see his face? No. <laughs> I still want to drop it. Okay, that's fine. No problem. So make it a three and it's got sausage on it because you don't eat sausage or pepperoni. Because after all, you're one of those guys that has a pizza and a light beer. Uh, I don't drink beer either. Oh, okay. You don't drink beer either. Do you have a soft drink? Diet Coke. <laughs> Before the seminar. Before I, I, I understand. I'm not on your case. I'm your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that what we all do? It's not just him. Yeah, give me a big extra cheese pizza and a light Coke. <laughs> okay, it's a sausage. Make it a zero. What you should be noticing is not just what he says. Do you see the change in his head? Do you see the change in his breathing? Her, his facial expressions? Is he in the same state? Yes or no? Is he even close? Where is it now? Zero to ten. Zero. zero. So zero is it's been sitting out for an hour. Make it minus three. Uh, it's pepperoni and sausage, and it's been sitting out for an hour, and the grease is kind of coming out of the meat. The grease is coming out of the meat. Can you picture that? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. And what if it was a cheese pizza, but it's still minus three? And it had also mushrooms on it, and it also had extra cheese, but it's still minus three. And it even had tomatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, but it's minus three. How do you do that? It's been sitting out for a while. How long? A couple hours. How do you know when you look at it? Um, it's kind of glazed over. I guess the sugar's come out from the cheese on top. It's kind of glazed over, maybe hard. It's getting hard. The sugar is glazed over on top. Anything else that makes it a minus three? Well, that'd be it. Okay. Make it a minus seven. Um, I can smell the meat kind of rotting a little bit. Smell the meat rotting. Smell the meat rotting a little bit. Where is it now? Minus seven. Minus seven. It's at minus seven. Bring it down to minus nine. But it has no meat. And it's minus nine. It has mushrooms. It has extra cheese. It has sun-dried tomatoes. And it's minus nine. I'm kind of fighting the urge because I'd be smelling the rats the smell of cheese in my stomach. Okay, go ahead and do that. Well, I don't want to throw up here. <laughs> but I mean, I, I would get that urge. You, you'll get the urge, but I won't let you throw up. <laughs> Tell us when you're at minus nine. You won't throw up till we put you at minus 11. <laughs> we won't take you that far. <laughs> but you'll be real close. Tell us where you are now. Minus, minus eight. Minus eight. Take it to minus nine. What are you focusing on? Take it to minus nine. Uh, the smell. The smell of what? Like the cheese ret rotting cheese. Ooh, rotting rancid cheese. Can you see what it looks like too? And smell it? I, I, I couldn't even look at it. Can't even look at it. Go ahead and look at it while you say that. Look at it. Think pizza. That's it. Just look at it. Think pizza. Tell me when you're at minus nine. Imagine mushrooms, extra cheese. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. That's it. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza.
That's it. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. Where are you right now? Scale from 0 to 10. Mushrooms, extra cheese, pizza. Smelling the rancid smell. Look at the pizza when you think about it also. See it and smell it. That's it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That's it, that's it. Mushroom, extra cheese. Smell it. Smell the rancid smell. That's it. Smell the rancid smell. That's it. Smell it. Smell it. There it is. Smell the cheese. You can smell oh. it. That's it. Smell the extra cheese. That's it. Smell it. Extra cheese. I like some extra rancid cheese. Where are you? Zero to ten. Right, minus ten right now. Minus, right. Nine, minus, minus nine. Minus ten. Don't go to minus eleven. Don't go to minus eleven. Okay. <laughs> you want some? No. I don't want any. <laughs> So does that look like a fun and hopefully valuable tool? I know it's deceivingly simple, so you might say, well, you know, I don't know if that's really going to change the way I really feel, or maybe it'll change the way I feel for the moment, but it's not going to last. In fact, Lisa Gibbons, who was the person who interviewed me in the infomercial that you saw before you got these tapes, she was at that program. And afterwards, she came up to me and she said, you know, how did you know he was going to change so fast? I said, because everybody does. We all have the same nervous system, and we use it effectively. It's like a computer. When you know the right code, you can change it rapidly. It's this hypnosis we have that change has to take forever. It has to be painful that keeps us from changing. And I said, also, I said, it'll last. Are you watch? She said, well, we'll see. So we just followed up about a year later with this gentleman, Bill. And what's interesting is, not only has he not touched any pizza for an entire year, I mean, not even close, but he said he's never touched any more cheese. And here's the best part. Is it because he can't? No, he could go back and change it tomorrow if he wants to. I'm not about taking away people's choices but he doesn't have an urge to. He doesn't have any desire is what he said. I just don't want it. Wouldn't it be nice to eliminate one of your addictions through this simple process? Now it's true if you are, let's say, loving chocolate, and you keep saying, I love chocolate, I just love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, and you give yourself this incantation, remember that? Or with all this emotional intensity, you talk about how much you love it all the time, and then you go to do this to change, highly unlikely it's gonna last because you're gonna be giving your brain a different message. So you have to make sure that you control your internal dialogue by creating a new incantation that supports you, and you have to make this adjustment. So I want you now to do this so you see that it really works. You can do it with food. You can do it with something that you're doing right now that's not so good, and figure out, okay, if right now my level of desire for this food is at a 9, and I don't want to eat this food or this alcohol or this whatever, how would I lower it? And don't try and go from 9 to 0. It might be too big a jump. I'll say, well, what would it take for me to only like it enough that I consider it on a 0 to 10 scale to be a 7 or a 6? And really think about it. And by the way, the state you're in when you're asking these questions makes a big difference. If you're sitting passively going, well, what would it take for me to feel like a 7? Your brain won't have the answer. You've got to ask a question where you're telling your brain, I expect the answer. You've got to have certainty when you ask a question that you're going to get the answer. If you don't have certainty, it won't work. So put yourself in a peak state and then say, okay, now what would it take for me to have this be like a 3? a zero and write it down and you'll find a little chart that's enclosed with this videotape that can help you track it what about a minus two what about a minus six and what you'll find is exactly how to increase your desire or decrease your desire I should say or increase it if you want to And by the way what is this really about quality of life we talked about setting goals for quality of life here's what I want you to do I want you not just set a goal for the quality of your life I want you to decide and make it happen And the way you do that is if I'm gonna go on a run here on the beach I don't want to just go for the run and see what shows up and whether I enjoy it or not. I want to decide in advance what the quality of that run is going to be for me. So if you want to take something that already feels okay or you're not inspired to do and you want to increase its intensity of enjoyment, you've got to say, okay, where am I right now about going on this run on the beach? Zero to ten. Well, I'm about a six and a half or seven. Okay, well, what would it take for me to be at an eight and a half? I don't know. As soon as you say, I don't know, say, I know I don't, but if I did, what would it be? kind of change your state, you'll get the answer if you keep asking. So you're going to say, well, if I were to like notice what a beautiful day it is, well, what would bring it to a nine? Well, maybe if I brought some music with me or if I listened to one of those Tony Robbins tapes <laughs> or something better, <laughs> something to put you in a good state so maybe I feel like I'm learning while I'm running. Well, maybe I could get it to a nine and a half by doing an incantation. As I'm running, I'm a lean, mean running machine. Or as I'm running, all I need is within me now. All I need is within me now. All I need is within me now with tremendous energy and emotion. Right? If you do that over and over again, how's that going to feel? You know? All I need is an airplane to go away so I can finish this tape. <laughs> no. 
whatever it is, you want to be saying it again and again while you're running. So you're literally programming yourself. That might bring you to a nine and a half. Maybe you go run with a friend. That brings it to a ten. The point is really simple. Don't settle for whatever life gives you. You determine the quality of your life. And the way you do it is ask this question. If I'm at level seven now, what conditions? First of all, what's the level I want to have? Maybe you don't want a level ten run. Maybe I want it to be a nine or an eight. What conditions must I create inside myself for that to be a level nine run? What conditions? What do I have to notice? What do I need to appreciate? What do I need to believe or experience in order to really do that? What, what do I need to add to the experience? What do I need to think about? What do I need to listen to? And if you ask that question, you'll get the answer. So I know I've dumped a lot on you in this tiny little tape and kind of jumped you all over the world here. But my goal here is really to get you to do the 30-day tapes. I'm not in this little videotape going to get you to fall through all these things, but those tapes will allow you to do a little bit each day where it's not invasive on your life. And if you'll just do the little exercise at the end of it for 30 days, I promise you, radical changes. There's a reason why there's 25 million of these tapes out there and so many people from every walk of life that have gotten results because it's a, it's a way of conditioning and creating lasting change. So please, go do those tapes. And if you're done, then I'm sure you've already got a great story to tell me. So when this tape's over, make sure you do this exercise. Don't say, oh, that was kind of interesting. Stand up and do it. In fact, before I leave you, stand up. Come on, get up off the chair. Stand up just for a second. Come on, come on, stand up. And as you're standing up right now, try something real fast. Stand the way you stand when you're not sure what to do, when you're feeling kind of uncertain. In fact, if you want to try something right now, think about something that you'd like to have happen, a goal or desire. And right now, stand the way you stand when you hope it works out. Come on, try it. How do you stand when you hope? Where are your shoulders when you kind of hope so? Sure hope it works out. I hope this darn tape program makes a difference in my life. Sure hope so. You know? How do, how do your shoulders look? What's your breathing like when you're uncertain? You don't really know. Where's the weight in your body? Where do your hands tend to go? Say something in an uncertain tone. There's nobody around. It's just you and me on tape. Go ahead, try it. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Hope, 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 hope. What does that feel like? Is your voice loud or quiet? Slow or fast? Shoulders and hands, where do they go? How does it feel about your ability right now to actually achieve this goal? Probably not very great. When you think about it, maybe you think about it working and also not working. Now try this. What if you were worried? What would you do? Try and be worried a second. What do you do? Maybe tense up a little bit? Get out of that. Put yourself in a state of certainty right now. How would you stand if you were absolutely determined that your goal would become a reality? That you were going to use this to truly change your life? Come on, if you're not standing up by now, please stand up. Right? Stand up. Feel strong. How do you stand when you are totally determined to make something happen? If you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, you have decided this will be and therefore it will be. If you don't even know how you're going to do it, but you just decided you're going to find a way or make a way. Have you ever been in that place where you felt like you're in a role where you felt like nothing was going to stop you? Even if you haven't, stand that way now. Who do you know who's unstoppable? Stand like that. Pick some movie character, Arnold Schwarzenegger or somebody. Somebody outrageous. Somebody and be in that state. Because remember, when you change your posture, when you change your breathing, most importantly, when you change the way you move, emotion is created by motion. The tempo at which you say something will change you. So right now out loud, in a state of certainty, say anything out loud about your goal. I will achieve it. I will make this happen. Whatever you want to say, but try it right now. In that state of certainty, do it now. Come on. In that state of certainty, right now, feel how good that feels. And in that state, I'd like to ask you to take some action. And the action is... Do this exercise immediately. So either pick something you want to lower your emotion for or pick something you want to enjoy more and change it right now. When you go turn this off, take action. If you do, I'll know you'll have some nice results to tell me as well. And I hope after you finish these 30-day tapes, you'll write me a personal note about what's happened in your life. That's what I do this for the most. That's what juices me. I'd love to hear the story of your success and your enjoyment. And also, I hope I get a chance to see you in person. I gave you a $100 discount to come to one of my seminars because I hope you'll come take advantage of that. There's nothing like being in the environment where you get personal live coaching to get something done. And if you join me at Master University, you won't just get mine, but you have people like Norman Schwarzkopf teaching you leadership and people like Peter Lynch who's taught in the past for us finance and people like John Gray to show you how to make your relationships work. So if you're interested in that, please look at the back of your book or call us with the number at the end of the show. But I just want to say to you that I hope this is not the end but the beginning of our relationship, but regardless, what I wish for you the most is a quality of life that is extraordinary. And that's done by you deciding to make it that way and using the God-given talents that you and I already have. So create an extraordinary life. Enjoy yourself. Take care of yourself and your family. Make a difference in the world. 
and most importantly, live with passion. God bless. I hope to see you soon.